Forth, it's great to be with you today. I hope this video finds you well. We're going to consider the question today, is it worth it? By the way, um, you can look down in the description section below this video for some additional resources. I encourage you to do that. But we're going to consider today the question, is it worth it? The other day, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, actually, I was driving home from soccer practice with my oldest son. He was, his hair was all wet with sweat. His face was still red from the exertion of, of soccer practice. And we were talking about the kind of conditioning that goes into uh, to play in that game. And it caused me to remember uh, some of the conditioning that I did back when I was uh, closer to his age and, and playing soccer. And we used to do this thing uh, we called X's. It was running X's. A soccer field is 120 yards by 75, something like that yards. And uh, what X's were was that you would jog along the shorter length, the uh, 75 yard length. And uh, when you hit the corner flag, you would cut a diagonal across the entire length of the soccer field in a sprint. And then when you got to the far corner, you would jog across and then hit the diagonal and again in a full sprint. And we would do so many X's uh, over and over again. That was part of our conditioning to be able to play the game the way that we wanted to play it. And I can remember that that feeling inside where your your lungs are burning. You're just you don't feel like you can go much anymore. You're starting to almost lose feeling in your in your in your hands because you're exerting yourself so much pressing. And I would think, why am I pushing so hard? You know, why why am I putting so much into this? Is it worth it? There are a lot of things in life that can cause us to ask that question. And I want to go to a text, a biblical text now that that can help us consider. Uh, how we should answer that question in various situations in life. And so look with me at Galatians 6, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 10. It says this, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Now I see at least four things here uh, that are relevant to this question, is it worth it? The first one is that there's a principle. There's a principle at work, and it's this principle of sowing and reaping. And the picture in this text is that for good or for ill, whatever I sow, that also will I reap. Now, the second principle that you see in this text, I'm going to call it a gut check. It is that thing that happens when we're asking ourselves, is it still worth it? The, the main thrust of this passage is the kind of life that I'm going to live. Am I going to invest in my uh, flesh, and in the Bible that means something like my selfish or uh, self-centered or sinful desires. Am I going to invest in that or am I going to invest in what is truly good? And so we can reach in our lives this question of, is it really work worth it? And that tends to happen when it appears to us that all we're doing is sowing and we're not reaping. And we can in those moments feel like, man, Maybe I, maybe I'm, maybe I should quit. Maybe I should quit sowing. Maybe I should quit sowing good in my life because I don't seem to be reaping. That leads us to the um, to the third thing that's in this text, and it's an assurance. the The text says that the one who sows uh, will reap. In due season, we will reap if we do not give up. And so when we face that gut check, we need to remember the assurance of our Lord and the, the way that God has made this world to work. It does work this way. There is no escaping the principle of sowing and reaping, that if I invest in what is truly good, that that will bring forth a harvest of good. And the last thing that we see here is an opportunity. And let me say, by way of opportunity, the thing about harvests is that they're exponential. There's a lot of talk about exponential growth these days. But Jesus talked about an exponential growth like this. He said, if you take a grain of wheat and it dies and it falls to the ground and it grows up and it bears fruit many times over, a hundredfold over. So I see in this text an encouragement for us, brothers and sisters, 
as we look around us in the midst of so much uncertainty, to consider the principle of the harvest, to, to realize that we're in a gut check kind of moment, to take the assurance that God has given us that when we invest good, it will return many times over good and to see that as an opportunity. Now I wanna conclude by uh, reading a, a brief excerpt from uh, almost a year ago. I found this in my, just looking back through my journal, that, uh, my own personal time opening the scripture every morning and, and uh, considering the, these, uh, these things in, in, uh, in the morning. And back in July of last year, I wrote this, let us not lose heart in doing good for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. And this was the application that, that uh, I felt uh, and still feel is applicable to me today. This simple command is exactly what I needed this morning. In the endless jumble of wants, needs, questions, concerns, comforts, trials, ideals, and imperfections, this command stands fixed like a rock amid otherwise shifting ground. It's been good to be with you today. Until I see you again, God bless you.